Okay, so uh, before listing down the features of Hadoop 2.0, let us look at the limitations of Hadoop 1.0. Okay, so now, now we will come to Hadoop 2.0 and we will look at the features of Hadoop 2.0. Okay, so there are a few things which we saw, always saw uh, in Hadoop 2.0, Hadoop 1.0, where, uh, which were some of the limitations. Now, the one limitation which I am sure, can, can, can people list out those limitations? Before I start telling you, I am sure some of you actually understand the limitations. Tell me what are the limitations of Hadoop and let's see if uh, Hadoop uh, 2.0 can actually handle that or not. Okay, single point of failure, everyone is talking about that, good. Not hot standby, fine, right, what else? It cannot do OLTP processing, right, not more than 4000 nodes, right, sure. So though Hadoop is very, very powerful, but still it had some limitations. Now let me tell you, very few people would have actually reached those limitations also. Very, very few people would have reached those limitations where you say that okay Hadoop uh, uh, now my I have so I have work which cannot be handled by Hadoop now some things which can obviously cannot be done is like Hadoop is for batch processing so you don't do any kind of real-time processing in Hadoop which is something which is given okay but uh, one more important thing was that uh, you have only one name node okay in Hadoop namespace means that uh, can someone tell me what is the namespace Everyone understands what his name says? Yes. So it is a file system which has the, uh, which specifies a metadata of a particular file system. Okay. So you, you can have a, you can divide your uh, complete file system into multiple namespaces. You can divide your complete data into multiple namespaces. You can say, okay, this is my marketing namespace. This is my, uh, uh, which are logically different. You can specify that there. Okay. Uh, in Hadoop 1.0, we just had one single name node, okay, and obviously with that we had a single namespace. So, which means that I had no logical partition and partition of that. I had just a single file system. Now, in Hadoop 2.0, there is a concept of federation, where you can have multiple name nodes, okay. And the reason for this is that uh, Hadoop one, with a single name node, what happens is that uh, you can only scale vertically after a certain limit. Why? Because you have to, what does the name node contain? It, the name node contains the metadata, right? It, it has to fa do the processing fast of that metadata. After you've reached a certain stage in terms of the number of data nodes on your cluster or the cluster size, scaling it further becomes an issue. And this usually reaches the point at around 5,000 odd nodes, okay? So after you've reached 5,000 odd nodes, Hadoop 2.0, becomes it becomes difficult to scale okay just try to understand it the limitations first let's understand the problem solution obviously is there so the problem is that and why is this problem coming because uh, the ram capacity of the name node reaches the vertical limit so after that if you are handling the performance issues start coming and this too comes when you have reached for 5000 node clusters now 5000 node clusters are not very common so most of the people who are in this class, when they go on to working in Hadoop, will be working on clusters which will be sometimes 20 node clusters or 100 node clusters. There's hardly anyone who will probably be working on more than say a 2000 node cluster. Okay. Uh, so very few people will reach that limit. Uh, Yahoo only has, I mean, the bigger clusters than these. Okay. Most of the people have clusters which can be done with Hadoop 1.0. Till now also, Hadoop 2.0 is not. Uh, in production mode it is mostly in a POC kind of stage where people are trying to migrate okay uh, but it is a good idea to understand these concepts okay so uh, in Hadoop 2 so you understand why we need multiple name nodes right how does it help that problem is something I'll tell you but why do why does a single name node reach a limit is understood by everyone second thing is high availability you understand that in Hadoop, Hadoop uh, name node is available highly but if it goes down then there's a problem right so that's where your uh, that's where your uh, uh, standby name node comes into play okay so a stand, standby name node comes into play just to take care of that failure scenario right which you've discussed in great detail throughout the classes okay 
then yarn is a new processing control mechanism now yarn is capable of not only running a map reduce job and please please listen to this very carefully yarn is not only uh, capable of running your map reduce job but a host of other applications you can do graphical analysis uh, using yarn you can uh, do uh, online processing also using yarn okay so all these limitations which were be coming because of the map reduce paradigm will be taken care by yarn so yarn has the capability yarn runs the things as application so a lot of these things will be taken care of once yarn yarn comes in with yarn you can do a lot of other things now why why do we need this because see now more and more uh, more and more companies are storing their data in hdfs okay for doing say something other than a batch processing you had to move that data out of that uh, hdfs and put it somewhere else and run the, say for example if i want to do a uh, if i want to run a graphical analysis graph uh, kind of analysis over that okay that is not possible to do in yarn so what i'll do is i'll move that data into a, a different data store and then do graph analysis over that data okay so but yarn allows you to do that as well it supports apis for doing that as well okay so the reason for introducing yarn is that since more and more organizations more and more companies are moving their data into hdfs it makes all the more sense that you have a way to run applications other than the map reduce type of applications on top of yarn uh, on top of hdfs okay so that's one big change which is coming in that probably is the biggest game changer here that with yarn you can do a lot of other things right now you will hardly find any examples because it is still academic interest uh, where people are doing it uh, maybe in a few months time you'll start getting it and as and we we also start getting applications on top of it we will also start sharing that with you okay so right now the, very few people have done much on this thing now uh, yarn also introduces a job instead of a job tracker and a task tracker we have introduced the concept of resource manager node manager and app master i'll explain that what it does it also helps in better controlling the jobs your jobs so i'll explain that in a while okay then there are other uh, important features like windows support uh, you have com backward compatibility okay you have integration testing with rest of the projects you also can take hdfs snapshots these are minor features but uh, the main features are federation high availability and yarn 